So next is systemic lupus erythematosus. And I'm probably saying that really bad. We call it SLE because that makes us not look like a butt munch when we say it. <laughs> so what is it and how do we diagnose it? So um, SLE um, or lupus for short, is a full body autoimmune disease. So out of all the diseases we've talked about, this is one that is a true autoimmune disease. It affects the entire body, skin, joints, renal, hematologically, neurological, cardiovascular, and so much more. And we're gonna talk about what that looks like. It's more common in younger women of color. So like African-American, Hispanics, Af uh, Asian-American and Native Americans are more likely to get it. Um, and usually in that younger age. So always think kind of like with, re with real autoimmune disorders, like usually Usually like around like 30s to 50s is when a lot of people get these. Um, we do um, check for anti-nuclear uh, anti antibodies, and those are usually present in a lot of these patients. And then we also have, they have to have at least four or more symptoms on the next slide, which I'm about to go to. So let's talk about some of those really common ones. Cause again, this patient can have a variety of symptoms. So skin wise lesions and ulcers are present and they have what's called a malar rash. That's M-A-L-A-R, malar rash, um, like a butterfly rash. Um, and it's a butterfly cause it literally goes over the nose and on the cheeks. And there's like a redness on the cheeks and it comes over, but it's in the shape of a butterfly. Um, and that's um, one of those telltale symptoms of um, of lupus. They can also have a lot of joint pain, arthritis, and things like that. Um, the, sadly, the cardiovascular system can be affected. They have all the itises, the inflammation, myocarditis, pericarditis, all those things that you miss and love from cardiac. Um, they can have all of those that can have abnormal heart rhythms. They can also have a high risk for clots. Now, there, it depends on the patient. Some of these patients are really high risk for clots. Some of them are really high risk for bleeding, and we'll talk about that here in a second. Um, and then renal, um, almost uh, uh, most patients within five years of getting lupus are going to have, um, you know, damage or complete destruction of their kidney. So everyone, you know, knows Selena Gomez and her kidney transplant. She has lupus. And so after so many years of having lupus, she ended up having to get a kidney transplant. And that's very common for patients um, with lupus to have, um, they get glomerulonephritis or um, other breakdown to damage to their kidney and leads up with them needing a transplant. And their nervous or their neurological system, they can have seizure disorders, in general, cognitive or psychological disorders. Um, they're at increased risk for infection. Um, and I love hematological last because I really want to focus on the fact that, you know, for the most part, they have a, they have a lot of blood disorders and um, usually low of all the cells. So low um, hemoglobin, so anemia, low platelets, so thrombocytopenia, which puts them more at risk for bleeding. But they also have a disorder um, where they don't create something, uh, where they create something, oh, I don't I remember exactly what it is, but needless to say, I want to say it's that they, I think it's that they have an abnormal production of a part of a clot. So they're more likely to make clots. So anyway, that's all you really need to understand is that sometimes they can have a low plate, let's be at risk for bleeding. Sometimes they can have this abnormal, um, you know, product that they're making that puts them at higher risk for clots. Um, and then they also have um, low white blood cells, which puts them more at risk for infection. So what's my overall treatment for this patient? I want to treat their joint pain. So usually NSAIDs or anti-inflammatories are going to be really helpful to treat that joint pain, um, that arthritis. Um, they are going to have fatigue, skin and joint problems and, um, you know, a lot of flare ups. So what can I do for that? So one of the most common drugs used is like anti-malarial, like the Plaquenil, like everyone knows about it because of COVID and everything like that. But um, it also can be used, um, uh, what do you call it, for this as well to help decrease flare-ups, um, and then immunosuppressive drugs as well. Anti-malarias are not immunosuppressants, but they do um, suppress your immune response. I know that's going to sound very confusing, um, but they work a little bit different, but effectively they're going to help so you don't have so many flare-ups. Because remember, this is the body attacking itself. Um, during acute flare-ups, they are going to use steroids, but um, like I mentioned in another PowerPoint, you know, we really want to try to limit the amount of steroids that we're using. There's so many possible complications and sometimes it can actually make things worse. So um, we want to use the lowest dose possible and um, you know, taper them as soon as possible. Um, and then some patients are going to be more at risk for clotting. So like I mentioned, it just depends on, you know, kind of um, what the way their disease presents itself. Um, but if they aren't more at risk for clotting or forming clots, they may need to be on anticoagulation.
Um, so how am I going to manage this patient as the nurse? Um, my goals are going to be pain and symptom management, uh, maintaining their skin and tissue integrity, because remember, they're going to have a lot of rashes, lesions, ulcers, skin issues. I want to try to prevent complications. Um, and, you know, they can have a lot of complications from um, skin breakdown, um, the uh, organ failure and things like that. So um, I'm going to teach them energy conservation techniques. Like a lot of the other patients, they really need to balance rest and activity because any sort of external stress or or things like that, it can really put them over the edge. So they really need to um, have a lot, a very good psychosocial support and have resources to help to decrease stress in their life. I'm also going to monitor for side effects of medications like the Plaquenil can um, cause a vision, um, uh, vision deficits and vision issues. So they need to have regular eye exams and need to report any abnormal eye symptoms. Um, if they're on steroids, I need to monitor their intake and output and look for complications of those steroids. Remember like that Cushing's like syndrome. Um, I'm going to monitor for organ failure complications. So their cardiac functioning, dysrhythmias, um, and then also their kidney function. I want to protect for safety with these patients because they can have cognitive, um, uh, you know, uh, their cognitive um, system can be affected as well. Um, and teaching them medication and treatment compliance is going to be key. And I want to protect their skin as well. I have some specific teaching here. Again, we want to teach them the energy conservation balance between rest and activity. Um, there's alternative pain therapies like heat or ice therapy that can be used on those joints when they're hurting. Um, again, minimize stress because that's going to make things so much worse. Um, teaching them proper hygiene and how to prevent infection. Avoid those that are sick is going to be key. Um, skin care. So we don't want to do anything that's going to really dry the skin out because it's so sensitive and so likely to react. And then if they're outside, we want them to avoid being outside at peak times like 11 to 3 and um, wear sunscreen when they go outside. Um, and pregnancy is really hard. So again, this happens usually, you know, I mean, it can happen even younger than 30. Um, obviously, Selena Gomez is um, younger than 30. Um, but um, uh, when she got diagnosed with lupus and everything. Uh, but, um, you know, effectively, we are trying to... Um, you know, support them in knowing that one, that it may be there because of the kidney issues and the other stuff, they may have a hard time getting pregnant. And if they can get pregnant, they may be very high risk and it may, they may not be able to carry a baby, a healthy baby, you know, all the way through pregnancy. So, you know, that can be really hard for people to um, accept and to um, have as a truth for their life. So just supporting them and knowing that like it, there is possibilities, but it's all about planning it, working with their doctors and collaborating. All right, that's all I got for lupus. Hopefully this um, opened your eyes to uh, some more of the autoimmune disorders that we have here. And before you know it, it'll be the end of the semester. You're almost there. See you soon.